check, check, check. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Open prayer. Everybody's having an awesome day in the Lord. Hope everybody's had a great day. Again, we, we were in service and it was a blessing this morning. And uh, we, we just had a great time in the Lord. And we open prayer. Everybody's having an awesome day. Again, we're looking forward to what God's going to do in the week ahead. Week ahead. We're excited about what Christ and again, our, our events coming up. So make plans to be with us. If you don't know, we're having our international day this Sunday at 11 a.m. So come out, be with us. Come out at 11 a.m., 334 Astro Street. We'd love for you to be with us in the house of the Lord. And uh, we, if you like, you can bring a dish. But we, we be encouraged about it just to bring your flag at least. Bring your flag. And again, we can just have a good time in the Lord. So whosoever will service. And uh, it, we, we typically have it annually. And uh, we want to get back to it again this year as well. Again, it's a time which we, many of you know, in New York City, we celebrate uh, Labor Day weekend and many, many celebrate their culture, their country, again, and have a huge parade in Brooklyn. So we, we, we incorporated that through the years and, and kind of piggybacked off of it and it turned into a whosoever will weekend because as you ride around the city, you see folks, flags everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And you begin to think about that, how that, uh, again, the, the love of God, the love which God has for all of mankind. Now, and men and women from all walks of life, from every kindred, creed, tongue. No doubt, God wants to save. God wants to see saved. And so, again, we want to uh, see men and women come in from all walks of life. And so we encourage you to be with us Sunday at 11 a.m. Then we have our, uh, our services throughout and then our fellowship following. And so we're excited about that. So spread the word, spread the news. Amen. And tell somebody to come out and be with us. We, we want to also give you a chance to give uh, before we get started here, to give unto the Lord. Again, we've been saying thank you. Thank you for, again, your support through the years, your support for the work of the Lord here. And uh, various ways you can give there on the, on the screen that you see. We have our church website at www.myntcc.org forward slash Brooklyn, New York. And then we also have text to give at 347-229-9933. You can give their way as well. And so uh, we encourage you to give. And then Zell. Zell is becoming more popular as men and women are, are giving that way through online banking. So we encourage you to give through Zell at the church email. Use the church email at ntccbrooklynny at gmail.com. Meaning instead of the phone number, you would use the email address as the contact information. And so we say thank you for your giving. May the Lord truly, truly bless you as our prayer. Amen. So again, let's get back to it. I, I want you to uh, draw your attention to the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark is so loaded. It's so loaded with information and, and uh, things in which Christ has done. And it's just amazing from really the entire book but this chapter here just hits off right off the bat with again some of the mighty works that Christ had done many believed because they saw many followed him because they felt and experienced the, his love they experienced his miracle they experienced the things in which he was able to do and it really really sparked the, uh, the impact in the community and uh, again it, many were grateful I'm sure and many some believe it or not were ungrateful following the fact because they turned their backs on him. But you know what, through it all, God loves many women. And really it shows the impact that uh, again, he has and cares for each one of us in a special way. And so I want, I want to read to you just a few verses of scripture here. Uh, we'll, we'll pull out a few uh, from the gospel here. And, and it tells us here in verse 28, the Bible says he, uh, immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. I'll just read it again. He says, immediately his fame spread around about or throughout all the region about Galilee. And I, I want to use that or give it a thought today about sharing the news, sharing the news. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your grace today, for your power, for your spirit. Lord, we ask you, Lord, by your Holy Ghost power, God, just move in a mighty way, touch the lives and souls of many women as we break forth your word tonight. 
God, just meet needs in this place. Touch lives. God, save the lost. God, and we just pray and give you glory for what you have in store. And God, we just pray again, just let your power and spirit be made manifest. Reach the lost tonight. Heal the broken. God, and let other men and women know that you are the only true and wise God tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Spread the news or share the news. News can spread. Good news, bad news, word can get around. And we think about back in those days, they didn't really have they didn't have any type of technology or internet or anything like that. No telephones, anything. So they had to have word of mouth. Word of mouth was key. And the rumors spread throughout the land and throughout the region. And the Bible says that it spread throughout its fame, spread throughout. Preached years ago about a message about going viral. Going viral, again, is one of the trendy terms nowadays about going viral. And literally, Jesus went viral. Okay, I we went to God that again it was able to be able to have come during the time when technology was is the way that it is. But you know, even in that, I, again, I still believe many women wouldn't believe. The reason why I say this is because of cell phones. People would probably would have, have recorded, they would have uh videoed it, they would have had it on surveillance cameras, on the news, on and on and on. But some believe it or not, somehow, some way, people would have probably said that it's fake, it's doctored, uh, or, or this, that, and the other. Much like in his day, you know what it takes many women to believe and trust God, regardless of what they see, regardless of what they know, regardless of what uh, uh, may transpire. Faith is bigger than that. Faith is bigger than anything that we, we see. Faith is the substance of things hopeful as we share with you, uh, the evidence of things uh, uh, not seen. Faith is something that, again, you have to look beyond the shadow of a doubt, beyond unbelief. Faith is something that causes you to believe the word of God exactly for what it says. Believe it in the beginning, God said it, and it was so. Throughout every miracle, throughout every uh, thing that he did, we believe it and trust it. And no doubt take it at his word. You know, that's one of the keys to, to being saved. That's one of the keys to really receiving what God has for your life. Is to absolutely receive it as the uh, unadulterated word of God. Many will pick at it. Many will find fault with it. Many will, uh, again, try to explain around it or discredit it. But you know what? At the same time, it comes too late to tell me, and I pray to God that it's too late for others to tell you that it's not true. The word of God is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And tonight, my friend, I want you to know this word that we send out, share it out, it's true. There's so much news out there, so much news in the world. Uh, again, false news or things in which people say is not true. You can't believe everything on the net. You can't believe everything that you see on the news. You can't believe everything you see on television, on and on and on. You can't believe everything you hear. But I'm telling you today, read the word, believe it, accept it, and God will bless and honor your, your faith and trust in him. The Bible says trust in the Lord at all times. Trust him. Believe what he said he would do. And he exactly will do and meet your every need. Throughout the scripture here in the Gospel of Mark, we'll look at it was a time in which he was being introduced, a time in which he, I hate the scene, came on the scene and actually, again, his ministry. And right off the bat, he, he performed a miracle where, again, he had, uh, was at a wedding and how did he had turned the water into wine. And uh, to some, it seems far fetched, again, but it's true. And, his, and the word went out. Got, a, got around town. Who is this one? Who is this one? The son of Mary and Joseph. Who is he? Word got around as, as John began to speak here in chapter 1 of Mark about and began to declare him as the son of God. The lamb of God was taken away the sins of the world. John began to spread the news. He spread the news that he is the Messiah. The Messiah had come. Coming to save the sinner coming to save the lost, coming to heal the broken, coming to make the path straight, coming to make the rough places smooth. John was spreading the word, spreading the word to repent of sin, spreading the word to tell many women to get right with God while there's still time. The Bible says, and so he preached uh, Jesus. He baptized Jesus. And no doubt the fame went out about 
son of God. No doubt I can only imagine even when Jesus was being baptized, when the father up in heaven spoke from heaven, no doubt the spirit of the Lord came upon him, how he spoke from heaven and said, behold, my son in whom I well please. Can you imagine people that will go back and say, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Some probably wouldn't believe it. But all churches today, it happened. Our father in heaven was pleased with the son. He was pleased with his son. No doubt that's why he was able to do the things he was able to do. His life was extraordinary. His life was exemplary. His life, no doubt, beyond what any man could ever live. In all church today, men and women spread the news to come see a man. Come find out about this one named Jesus. And tonight, my friend, I encourage you to do the same. Come see, trust, believe in Almighty God. Come to Jesus now. Come to the Lord our God. And no doubt, he's able to meet your need as well. The Bible says, and so from that point on, he went out, he was led in the wilderness in verse 13 of Mark 13. He was led in the wilderness. And the Bible says how that the enemy began to tempt him. Word got around that again, how that Jesus, no doubt, was doing great and mighty works. Word got around uh, even to old Lucifer himself. Word got around and said, hey, uh-oh, he started. It's begun. He began to shake up the devil's kingdom, shake up the enemy's kingdom, and shake up all that, again, uh, that Satan had uh, done in their lives. And so as you see here, we find how that uh, I begin to shake it up. It began to uh, cause, again, a, a stir in the enemy. No doubt we see it. And from the scriptures, it tells us that Jesus uh, came and he had uh, experience with the enemy there in the wilderness. But Jesus, no doubt, was able to overcome and rebuke the enemy. He was able to overcome and rebuke Satan himself to where naturally, again, he had no authority and or dominion over him. I can only imagine him dispatching even more uh, of his devils to go out hey, and stop and start spreading the lie. Start spreading any and every lie that you can about this one Jesus. Satan was no doubt probably turned upside down because uh, Jesus did not bow. Start spreading the news tonight that you don't have to bow as well. Jesus didn't bow and you don't have to bow as well tonight. I'm telling you today, we can take on and live the life of Christ, Jesus, our Lord tonight. And so the scriptures went on. It went on and told us here from the word of God. Uh, the Bible says uh, <clears throat> time went on. And the, the, Bible, the Bible talks about in chapter uh, one as well. How did John, the same one who baptized Jesus, was now thrown in jail? He was thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. Again, how the Bible says the time is fulfilled, Jesus told us. Again, that men should repent and believe the gospel. Things were getting serious. The devil had raised up his head. He was mad at John. He was mad at Jesus. He was mad at the disciples because the word was spreading. The word, the good news was getting out. The devil hates good news. Uh, anytime again the good news spreads, uh, the enemy will come in and try to squash the good vibe, if you please. He'll try to squash good news. He'll try to squash a good thing. The enemy hates good news, my friend, tonight. And so we begin to see how that again they threw John in jail. But you know what? It still didn't stop the news. Uh, it didn't stop the good news from going forward. Jesus went over in the Sea of Galilee. He went through the towns and the villages preaching and teaching the gospel, gathering men and women to follow him and to come and believe and trust in the living God. The Bible says it uh, from the miracles of walking on water to the miracles of feeding the 5,000, the word had spread, the news had spread, something special about this man. Only this man, only a man like this, God has to be with him. Only someone like this, the, he has to be the son of God. The word began to spread. The Pharisees got upset. The Sadducees got upset. And I'm telling you today, any time again here today, the enemy are, are again, a men and women, a non-believer, again, uh, gets around the presence of God. It shakes up the devil's camp. It shakes up the devil's kingdom. And so you ever notice when you start coming to church, you start reading your Bible. You start thinking about going to church. The devil will do any and everything he can to shake you up. The Bible says, and so they begin to get stirred up. The Bible says, but it did not matter what the enemy was trying to do. It was still good news. And as each one 
that had a need, he was able to absolutely fulfill and meet that need. Those same demons that were dispatched out, one was uh, tormenting a man with an unclean spirit. Many years he had tormented him in Mark chapter 1. For many years he had tormented him and tormented this man. He caused him to really even try to commit suicide. The enemy will try to block off good news. The Bible says the enemy will try to blind your mind from hearing and seeing the good news. Perhaps you're on the verge tonight of wanting to take your life. I want you to know there's, there's a reason to live tonight. There's a reason to serve. There's a reason to go on with life, and that's through Jesus Christ. I challenge you tonight to call on God. I challenge you tonight to stop listening to the enemy of your soul and come to Christ. This man was trying to take his own life. But the one with good news came by. Good news right in time. Good news right on time. The Lord Jesus Christ showed up. And the Bible says he cast out an unclean spirit. The Bible says that this man was given a new life. The unclean spirits were ran off. And the Bible says in our main text in verse 28, the fame of, of him was spread abroad throughout the region and throughout all of Galilee that devils obeyed him. Demons tremble, my friend, night. Darkness has to flee. Sickness was leaving. No doubt, again, sorrow and brokenness and, and plagues were leaving the land. When good news, Jesus Christ, the word of Almighty God, who was made flesh, came on the scene. It changed the whole dynamics in life. The Bible says he went forth into the synagogues and various places and people from all walks of life. In verse 30, verse 30 Simon, his wife was sick. Naturally, to lose your wife, to lose a loved one in general, but your wife would be devastating. For those who lost spouses, our prayers go out to you. Peace of your leaves. No doubt his wife's mother, I should say, she was there and she was sick. The Bible says that how that uh, they were worried that she was going to die. We serve a healing Jesus tonight. Whether it's a loved one, nobody likes to see anyone go. But God is able to step in. God is able to step in and intervene. God was able to step in in this situation and intervene. From a sad story, from a doc time in which the doctors wiped their hands and said, well, there's nothing else we can do. From a time in which there no medicine could do what, uh, again, they hoped for. No surgery. There was good news. And Jesus showed up. And you know what tonight I'm telling you? The good news is he's still alive. He's still well. He's still a healer tonight. He's still a way maker. He's still able to lift the soul. He's able to lift those feeble hands tonight. He's able tonight. There's still good news, my friend. And I call on the living God. Share this news. Tell someone else. There's good news. We've shared it with you. And I want you to share it with someone else. Receive the word and then share it with someone else. God can and will do the impossible tonight. The Bible says, and, and he went out throughout and he was able to heal her. The Bible says, even at night, those that were diseased and possessed in verse 32, Mark, we in Mark 132. Those that were diseased with devils. All of them were healed and delivered. It's good news that deliverance can come. Perhaps you're fighting some demons in your life, some, some alcohol demons, some drug demons, sexual demons. It doesn't matter what kind of demon you're facing, devils you're facing, sin you're facing. God is able to deliver. Well, go back and read all this in Mark chapter 1. This morning we talked about uh, uh, in one day, this day, all of this can take place in a moment. While he's here with us, he's way overseas as well. He's way at the bottom of the earth. He's on the other side of the earth. He can go here, there, to and fro, and he can do it all in a day's time. There's nothing too big or too hard for our God tonight. And I'm telling you, in your soul, in your mind, there's nothing that God cannot do if you would give it over to him. He's never too busy to help you. He's never too far away. He's just one prayer away tonight. The Bible says that 
how the next, even the next day, the Bible says he went to a place to pray. I want to let you know that we have good news in this. And I want you to share the news. We're sharing this with you. That you can pray. He's a God that has ears to hear. The scripture tells us. He has eyes he can see out of his hands. That he can reach down and touch you. Hands and arms that can pick you up. Lift you up. He's not like any other God. He's not false but he's real. And the Bible says he went to pray. In this place and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and God was with him. His father was with him and God, a man was able to do great and mighty works through him. And he built up his strength tonight. Perhaps through all of that walking and all of those things that they were doing. He needed to build his strength. And there's good news tonight. You have a source. He is our source tonight. He is our source, our strength, our all in all. It's good news, and you can have access to him through Jesus Christ. The Bible says he went to the synagogues preaching. As we wrap this up, he went to the synagogues preaching. He went through the cities and out throughout the land and cast out devils. Verse 40 talks about he went to the lepers and healed them, people that were outcasts, any and everybody that would come to him. He was able to help them. And whoever you are, and that's why we're going to celebrate this weekend, whosoever will. Come bring your friends and your loved ones to the whosoever will service. It does not matter who they are. Bring them this weekend. And I'm believing God for some special, special move, a special blessing upon the service, a special move on whosoever will come. We encourage you to invite the lame, the halt, the weary, the broken. Tell someone, encourage someone, and try to bring 10 people invite 10 people to the house of the Lord not only invite them but bring them with you tell someone to come be a part of the great great moving of the Holy Spirit this weekend God wants to do something awesome spread the news share the news God is going to do great mighty works as long as he tarries as long as he again delays his return come be with us this weekend I'm telling you God is wanting to do a great work and you know what today the Bible says his fame spread and he was moved with compassion. His love tonight, his love is like none other. His love tonight, friend, is like none other. His love goes far beyond, far beyond man's love, far beyond a mother's love, far beyond a father's love, and far beyond, again, what you may think, of, maybe even experience, far beyond what you yearned for. The Bible says he was moved with compassion. Compassion for you, compassion for me, compassion for all. The Bible says he touched them, these lepers, regardless of their condition, regardless of how they appeared. He didn't care. He touched them and said, be clean. That's the type of God we serve tonight. There's good news. Spread the news. God can clean up the land. God can clean up anyone's act. God can clean up anyone's soul. Spread the news tonight. Spread the news. The Bible says, and these words, as soon as he has spoken these words, immediately the leprosy left. No doubt these men were delivered and they were made whole. And the word went out throughout the city. It got so popular, it got so bad. Because, again, you would think that it would be a good thing, but it became a negative thing. Sometimes popularity can turn to be negative. And that's what was going on with Jesus. The Bible says he could not go back to that city anymore. Why? Because, openly, because they, um, there were those that wanted to kill him. But his mission wasn't done yet. And you know what? Today we see how the but through his popularity, through his love and his grace, the word got around. The news was shared. And shared and shared and shared for you to where we can reach to us today. In spite of the enemy, in spite of the negative, in spite of the hindrances, in spite of them trying to crucify him and trying to end it all, that really just perpetuated it even more. The Bible says the word spread. 
and axes spread like wildfire. Uh, again, thousands and thousands were saved. You can't put the word of God out. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. And so the word went out. And naturally, thank God that Jesus, the risen Savior, the one who gave his life, the one who died on the cross for us, the one who paid it all that we could be saved. They couldn't stop it. And I can challenge you, ladies, stop trying to resist yourself. Stop trying to resist the things of God. God is reaching out to you. God is, he loves you. He cares for you. And tonight I ask of you, don't delay. Don't delay. The news is being shared, is being spread. Don't reject it. Don't blow it off. Don't call it, uh, again, a false uh, tale. But it's real tonight. He's the only one, the gospel, the only thing that can give this world hope. And Jesus Christ came to give this world hope. That word spread. And it spread to you and out of that. I'm thankful tonight. As I was listening, uh, I think, to uh, one of the reverends, Dr. Long, Reverend Devin Jai. He was, uh, I guess, at a service, a fellowship meeting this past couple of weeks ago. And he was talking about how that he went around the room and come to find out one had invited one, another had invited another. Another had invited another, and another had invited another. And it all led around the room to, again, how they, again, that's how they all were all end up in the same room. Many of them, not all, but again, many of them because of someone spreading the news. Spreading the news, like the old song, New York, New York, spread the news. And no doubt that's the way things get around, by word of mouth, and by spreading the news. You know what? I want you to know tonight Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. He died and rose again and paid the price for your our sins. He went to hell for us that we don't have to go. My friend today, give him your life. Accept him. Confess him as Lord and Savior of your life. With your mouth, confess you as man. Speak it tonight. Call on Jesus, the Son of God. Confess him as Lord of your life. He'll forgive you of all your sins. That's good news. No doubt from that moment on, you can go and tell others, hey, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, wiped away all of my sins. It's good news. I'm a new man. I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. I'm going to have a new beginning, a new start. There's nothing like it. It's like a man or woman who gets released from prison. And the news spreads. I'm free. I'm free. The news is spread. Hey, guess what? So-and-so is home. So-and-so's out. So and so's out. Amen. Why? Because we've been delivered, been released, been set free. What's so and so's out the hospital? Even better. So and so's out the hospital. He's been released. He made it. Uh, the surgery went well. He he's alive. Or this that, and the other. They've been free. And so naturally, the word spread. You know what? Let us spread the word. That what Jesus can do in a life, what He's done in your life. Tell others. Tell someone. Spread the news that Jesus is King and Lord. And he's coming back again. Tell someone that you know he's coming again. Don't wait too long. Amen. While there's still time. God bless you. I pray we look forward to seeing you this Tuesday night in Bible study. And uh, we, we look forward to what God's going to do. And then again, this Sunday morning, the 1st of September, 11 a.m. Let's have a great time in the Lord. Let's come believe in God, trust in God for a great move of God. All right? God bless you is our prayer. We will see you soon by the grace of God. God bless you.